Okay, so this is a video about a filmmaker's first experience shooting on a RED camera. The camera that for years, you just think like if you have a RED, you are a filmmaker. Or if you have a RED, at least you'll be hired be like because you have that camera. Like RED and Ari are just held in such high esteem. And this is my first time ever shooting with a RED camera, ever getting my hands on one, pressing record, going through the whole deal. This video is basically just gonna be a bunch of example clips with a little bit of like, hey, this is what Niles thinks. I set up three shoots that were, you know, almost real. They were real in that we shot things, but they weren't like professional sets where I was heavily depending on this camera and my experience using it to perform. It was more so let's get this camera in a scenario that could be a commercial shoot, could be a documentary, could be a project that you would love to film. And today we're gonna go through what was awesome about RED and what I found kind of interesting with the whole workflow and ecosystem and all of that because i know that is that is like a big thing like it's it's like it's that all right here's a great example of shooting with a new camera and not knowing how the new camera works somehow the screen's just green I'm like is that is that what my image is actually looking like because i don't want it i don't want it to be green but yeah i don't know what button i hit or anything so we'll see it was the white balance. The the white balance is what is what was wrong. <sighs> Quick side note, this is not a sponsored video. Red is not paying me to say anything. I don't really know if they pay anyone to say anything for that matter. Wow, it's actually way lighter than I thought. Uh, but how I got this camera was basically a buddy who lives here in San Clemente. My wife used to watch his kids. He now works at Red. I sent him a text and he said, yeah, I can get you a camera. Um, so yeah, it was as simple as that. It really was a two week loaner, no strings attached. All of these thoughts, my thoughts are my actual, my actual thoughts. The first thing I noticed about this camera is such a simple one. And it's just that it just worked so well. It was extremely easy to use. And if you just want to turn on a camera and shoot the highest possible quality, you can do that fairly quickly with the RED. Now there is a decent amount of boot up time. If you are coming from a mirrorless camera or even like a lower level cinema camera like the FX3, you are fairly used to cameras turning on and in two seconds you're shooting. With most traditional cinema cameras, that is not the case and the RED Komodo X is no exception. You know, roughly it probably takes 20 seconds to, to, to boot on. But this isn't a, a technical review. I'm not timing it. I don't even have the camera anymore, so. So yes, the camera works really well, which shouldn't really come as a surprise for the price point, Red's history, blah, blah, blah. But it, it only works so well as in all the accessories you have, and the accessories are where things get pretty pricey. So let's quickly go over the kit I had, because I've seen Red users really just pimp their cameras out in different ways, but at the end of the day, all you need is a monitor and a lens, and you can rip it. So obviously we had a Komodo X, we had the DSMC3 Red Touch 7 inch small HD screen, we had the Red Compact Top Handle, we then had two Red Bolt Micro V batteries. Obviously you need a way to power the camera, you can use other batteries. And lastly, we had one two terabyte card, a card reader, and that was it. It's a pretty simple setup and all of that, just a quick, a quick number for what that would cost, all of that, oh, I gotta do some math here. Uh, that would cost you $15,263, which, it's a lot of dollars. Okay, so really quick, we have to thank today's sponsor, Track Club. Track Club is my favorite place to get music for one very clear reason, and that is that you can download the stems of the songs, which basically makes your music editable. 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 It's editable. If you don't like the drums, just get rid of them. Or if you really like the keys, just solo those. It gives you a ton of flexibility for your edits, and every song in this video was found on Track Club. Two of my current favorite artists are Bridge City Revival and Memory Fields. You should check them out. Massive thanks to Track Club for sponsoring this video, and if you wanna check them out, click the link below, and you can get three months, yes, three months free, which is awesome. Okay, let's keep going. 
So continuing on with my first point about that it just works so well, you really do feel the quality of red gear in your hands as opposed to other camera brands. The whole ecosystem of that camera from even how cables plug into the camera is just more streamlined, it feels stronger, and it just feels more trustworthy. So much you see nowadays is just like cables and dongles and bongo ties and stuff just everywhere. You tear decks here and cables there. And the red ecosystem, if you do buy their proprietary gear, is gonna cost you an arm and a leg, but it's going to work better. So that was one thing. I have always been somewhat of a red hater because of how expensive it is. And I do think I was shocked, shocked at how much I actually liked the red gear versus other third party gear. Oh, you're good. The next thing I want to talk about is the image. The image, that's what we care about the most. I would say the image looked really, really good. I mean, it looked amazing, as you would expect from a red, from the Komodo, you know, the, the, the original Komodo was great, the Komodo X, how could you not think it's gonna be great? But really, Although the image looked amazing, you almost, with all the hype, you almost expect it to look better. And that's almost unfair to Red because like, how can it look better? It looks really, really good. But because of how highly regarded this camera brand and ecosystem is, you almost expect it to be a fix all. You almost expect it to like answer these long lost soul searching filmmaker questions that you've had about your work. In reality, like it doesn't. It is still a camera that is still victim. Victim might be a tough word, but it's, I'll say it. It's still victim to the filmmaker holding it. And yes, you might get hired to do work because you have the nice camera, but if I'm being honest, I've never really been asked, you know, hey, first question, filmmaker Niles, what camera are you shooting on? You're hired. It's way more like, let me see your work. Let me see what you've done. Let me see what you've made. And I feel like I did have this weird moment when I was first looking at the footage and I kind of thought, yeah, looks really, really good. I don't know what I thought was going to happen in that moment, but I almost thought that maybe I was going to have this like, epiphany. I mean, it looks amazing, but I think people build up this idea of what it's going to look like and how it's going to revolutionize their lives, their filmmaking lives. And I just don't think it really works like that. And I think that's actually true for all cameras. Okay, rant over. Let's keep talking about RED from a usability consumer standpoint. Let's talk about the workflow for RED raw files, .r3d files. There is totally a trick to the trade for this. And if you're a Red user, you know it. I actually called Ben Hess and I was like, yo dude, why is everything not working when I import my footage? Like, why is this just like, it's not drag and drop. Um, and he gave me his quick one, two of what you do <laughs> to make sure that you import the footage correctly. Um, but I will say a little cumbersome, like other camera systems don't have that difficult of a workflow. And it used to be harder from what I understand. Now it is easier. But if you're coming from a Canon or a Sony camera and it's, you know, 10 bit nice footage, you pull it into Premiere and it just plays back. Like that is easier. That is easier, it's simpler, and it's more streamlined. That said, with those raw files, I was able to just crank exposure in post, change white balance, like what you can do in your editor with those raw files is crazy flexible. And that's true for all raw files, but I just haven't shot raw since I had my C200, and I was pleasantly surprised, just like, it's just so forgiving compared to other cameras. When it comes to the UI, searching through the menus, it's pretty plug and play. Like when you turn it on, it's easy just to choose 6K, you know, ProRes or 6K RAW and just let it rip. And it's also easy to change your frame rates. But I do think as I was trying to navigate the menus on that seven inch screen, I definitely got confused a couple times because how you're used to operating a small HD um, monitor, it's slightly different because you have all this red stuff integrated. And then navigating the red stuff, it just seemed like there were other small HD features. And there's a lot of just menus and things going on that I found pretty confusing. If you're a red user, probably not a big deal. But if you are switching from another camera system, that the red menu, small HD menus, it's good. there's gonna be a learning curve attached to that. From what I've heard in the past, red cameras run pretty hot. They have fans on them and the fans are pretty loud, which has always led to limitations with audio just because you have this fan noise. 
I did not test the audio, but I can say that I never heard those fans kick on. So either they're really quiet or the camera operates really efficiently to not need them. I do think it's hilarious that you can like see through this camera. I don't know if there's another camera that you can look through the middle of it. And it truly is because there are massive fans and they need that air to get through to cool it off. And like the Canon R5, if you remember that whole debacle, basically the reason it would overheat is because it was shooting 8K, no fans, and the whole thing would just shut down. So RED obviously has mitigated that. In the past, the fans have been really loud. Now, you, I didn't really hear them or they don't need them as much, I'm not sure, but it wasn't, it wasn't an issue. Back to the price, I did ask the guy that I got it from why it's so expensive. I just had to call a spade a spade and be like, yo, bro, why is this thing so much money? And the reason, in his mind, is because they do use higher quality materials to make their cameras. And I actually was kind of like, okay, like that would be like the catch-all answer. But then he sent me a Linus video, Linus Tech Tips, where they take apart a red. No wonder the thing's so damn expensive. And in that video, they're basically shocked that they're using a certain chip and a certain like motherboard. Now that is where like my mind starts to melt and I won't even pretend to understand all that technical side of things. But as a camera consumer and as a filmmaker, knowing that I'm getting the best stuff internally in my camera makes that 40% more expensive purchase worth it because if you're gonna get better electronics and you're gonna get better internals for your camera, that just means your camera's gonna work better. All right, y'all, so hopefully you found that somewhat interesting. Hopefully all that example footage uh, you found compelling to look at. And yeah, that's my experience uh, shooting with red for the first time. Uh, color me, very impressed. Also color me, I don't know if that still works. Um, color me, maybe cautious on spending that much money. Like I think it looks incredible. And if I had 15K lying around, I'd probably go buy that kit immediately. But the reality is, is I don't. And I just don't know. It's like, you're, you're kind of doing this. Are you gonna love a red camera if you buy it? Absolutely. Is it gonna change your life and be this, you know, earth shattering watershed moment where now you're a real filmmaker? No, like it, it just isn't. So I do feel, somewhat encouraged by that because as a filmmaker I was always a little bit like man I don't have a red like I don't have an Alexa mini um, and the more I get my hands on those kinds of cameras the more I feel like I don't need to buy one myself like if the job requires it we can rent it and yes I am lusting over a Komodo X and I've even been talking to my wife about how we could make it work but at the end of the day it's like maybe I go buy a truck instead or something or like go on a really good vacation or like five really good vacations. I don't know, but yes, hopefully you found that interesting. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video. All right, later.